now we have seen what you can do, uh, and you upload uh, data, you, up, you, you can upload papers, you can upload software, you can upload whatever is needed to create what I called before a research package. The problem is, once you do that, uh, who's this science of? How can you ensure that uh, what you upload is yours? How can be uh, uh, rewarded by what, you, but by what you uploaded on the open access repository? Because the object itself can be cited, can, you can get alt matrix, but how can uh, you make your own science more visible? That's the problem. So uh, since we are using the OIs, uh, this comes basically for free thanks to the interaction between DOIs and ORCID. So ORCID is becoming a de facto standard to disambiguate researchers in the world. So I may ask you how many in the room have ORCID profiles? Well, it's always, I always uh, every time I ask this, is between 10 and 15% of the audience. That's uh, really bad. But I mean, you can get an ORCID in minutes, and actually more than 2.2 million researchers in the world. OK, great. <laughs> stick, stick your orange uh, post-it on your laptop. OK. <laughs> OK, so um, ORCID is um, a nonprofit organization. Um, to, uh, so you, 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 you register your ORCID, and then you get a unique identifier that you can attach to your papers, to your data, to whatever you produce. So uh, you have seen this already. Uh, in the OAR, in the SIGA OAR, we have a, a, a data site DOIs. And uh, you can connect, uh, or, uh, uh, you can connect your, your, your uh, research products, your publication, your data sets, your images, your figure, your reports to your ORCID profile using DOIs. So Carla showed you that when you upload something, you can assign a DOI. You can assign a DOI when you do that from the web interface, or you can do that using the API. So you have a beautiful final set of data. You upload on the open access repository, and you assign to each data set one DOI. And you can do that just running a script or behind a web portal using the APIs that Carla showed you. Then, Saigeia has, uh, thanks to the University of Catania, we provided to Saigeia a uh, prefix, a DOI prefix. So what are you going to do with the DOI prefix? So, okay, all records in the OI can be claimed. How? If you go to ORCID, in, you log in on your ORCID profile, you don't need to fill your papers one at a time. This would be very boring. But you can search and link from your papers on external sources. For example, if you already have uh, your data on Crossref, on Researcher ID, or on Scopus, you can claim all of them. But one of the, the external sources you can claim your, your research product from is Datasite. So if you click on Datasite, then you are redirected to a page where you can put all your identities. So that's my ORCID. I'm, I sign papers under Roberto Barbera or Barbera Roberto or Barbera or other kind of, uh, and you know the way you sign, so you can put all everything here. Then you get, uh, then you get, uh, okay, uh, you search and you get something. You get a list of papers that satisfy, that fulfill the request. So basically your paper. And you can see that some of your paper are on the SIGA open access repository. That you can be paper, data set, reports, all the gray literature. The gold literature is what you publish on your uh, uh, journal, on your web journal. But if you have a DOI, still you can connect a paper you published on physical review or on physical review letters with the data you have published on your institutional repository. And together they can combine, they can be combined as a research object. So you can just uh, say, okay, I want to add to ORCID, and this will become my, will go into my research product, in my, into my ORCID profile. Or I can say, okay, I can say to data site that so every time I publish something or and assign a DOI, it automatically put in my ORCID profile. 
So as a scientist, you will become very easily more visible because uh, you can connect not only your beautiful papers, but you can connect your internal reports, your deliverables, your data sets, your software, whatever. And you can do that starting from your application. You don't need to do that in the boring way, like filling a web form. Programs can do that for you. So behind, behind Emmanuel, you can have a local storage, you can have uh, a cloud storage. I know that people manage to, to assign uh, one data store, a distributed one database storage to Emmanuel. But using Emmanuel, you can uh, merge the concept of data repositories for file with uh, digital libraries where your, where your work can be credited and become visible. And you can do that by yourself or you can do that by your applications. And using the concept of DOI, you can add the references. So you have a paper. As references, I have three data sets, two programs, three containers, one virtual machine. Everything is needed to reuse my data. You publish everything on the open access repository, and then you link to a science gateway where the data and the virtual machine or the container can be started, maybe with the future gateway or with the Indigo PAAS and you can restart everything and you reuse everything. So uh, the message we want to convey you today is that uh, uh, usually we speak about uh, the data repositories for uh, science and the data repositories for libraries. Try to open your mind and look at this as a unique thing where you can store something and you can get credited for what you store and you can become visible for what you store. Okay, so uh, we said alt matrix. So basically, every single record has a DOI here, as a DOI. So if you if you put this in a tweet, or on a blog, or in a scientific blog, uh, you the alt matrix of that particular DOI will increase. This is already at nine or ten. So you can immediately get visible because uh, normal citations uh, increase very slowly as a function of time. You publish something now, then the, the, the journal is spread, somebody reads your paper in one month or two months or three months and they start citing. And then you, the citations of your paper or your data set increase, but very slowly. Uh, some, pop, some data sets or some applications can become very, very popular immediately on the, on the social network. Of course, you have to disentangle the quality of the citation, of course, but this you have to do also with the normal citations. If you dig into the problem, I mean, the problem of citation is much bigger than you can imagine. But, and, but again, okay, then you can get more, your, more you, you may remember my, my presentation yesterday when we were concerned about visibility of African science and African scientists. That's the way we wanna go. So people produce science, Science can be combined into research products. Research products can be stored on open access repositories, can be reused on science gateways, but can become visible and citable very, very quickly. Okay, so that's it for the programmatic interface to open access repositories. Thank you very much.